Anthony Joshua beats Andy Ruiz to become a two-time world heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Remstar Sisso. All right, then let's get into this. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Fuck my life sideways. Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua. Joshua is now the two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Let's go all the way back. Let's strip this back from the. Let's strip this back from the beginning. Let's strip this back to Friday, because this is where we have to go. Andy Ruiz jumps on the scale, two hundred and eighty-three pounds. 15 pounds heavier than when he fought AJ the first fight. Now, from what I saw, everything that I could see in the build-up, it looked like Andy Ruiz was going to come in like 20, maybe 30 pounds lighter. Um, and then I actually saw something, I think it was on Friday evening. Andy Ruiz's dad did an interview with some channel on YouTube, can't remember who it was. And Ruiz Sr. said that Andy was feeling weak. So it sounds like Andy Ruiz had dropped maybe anything from about 20 to 30 stones. What? Sorry, 20 to 30 pounds in weight. Um, and he said that he just felt weak. So they decided to sort of put the weight back on. Now, that is a lot of fucking around. Now, let's be honest. Andy Ruiz was in camp for three months, maybe four. Now, for you to drop 20 to 30 pounds and then put back on... You're looking at him fucking around with weight of about 60 pounds over the, sk over the span of about three to four months. Not the most ideal thing off the jump. Let's also break this down. Anthony Joshua came into the fight 10 pounds heavier. You could see Anthony Joshua looked a lot smaller. He had trimmed off a lot of that unnecessary bulk that he had. And he looks a lot more leaner, a lot more agile. And you could see from the jump that that was going to pay... Um, key benefits to Anthony Joshua in the later rounds because I've always said that he's too big and he gasses and his gas tank would always sort of come and sort of fuck him up going forward so yeah that was the Friday Anthony Joshua 10 pounds lighter Ruiz 15 pounds heavier now when all of my boys were hollering at me hard on Friday they were like oh so what do you think's happening what do you think that means I actually said from the jump I actually said look I'm not 100% sure. I thought that it was a facade from Andy Ruiz. If you look at Ruiz on those scales on Friday afternoon, Andy Ruiz was wearing a huge sombrero. He was wearing a vest. He was wearing jeans. He was wearing what looked like designer trainers or something for the weigh-in. Don't be surprised if he had maybe two phones in his pocket, a wallet, and maybe some other stuff. So I didn't really think that he was truly 15 pounds heavier, but he was probably still a few pounds heavier. You could say maybe between about five and eight. And then when you take into consideration the clothing that he had on, that sombrero hat that he was wearing must weigh at least maybe two or three pounds. The jeans, the phones, the wallet, any cash or coins, cards, whatever he might have had on him, that would have definitely sort of contributed to the additional weight for the weigh-in. But, you know, you couldn't really make much of that. People were asking me, they're like, yeah, so what do you think that means? Do you think that Ruiz is going to be able to keep up with the extra weight? And I was like, well, I don't know how much he really weighs. And furthermore, you don't know. It's heavyweight boxing. So Andy Ruiz was three stones heavier than Anthony Joshua. Now... I'm not the best at maths, but, um, you know, that's a lot more weight. And it all came down to, could Andy Ruiz keep up the stamina? Would Anthony Joshua look better in the sort of, uh, in the lighter weights? And I've always said, I think if Anthony Joshua can get back down to the weight and physique that he had when he beat Dillian White in 2015 he'd probably rule the roost. I think that was the best he was in terms of physique um, and in terms of weight. Since 2015, I think it was December 15 when he fought White, he's just been on a one-man mission to just bulk up and look like a bodybuilder. 
Anthony Joshua, for me, he just loves the aesthetics. He likes looking in the mirror and thinking that he's trying to be as big as The Rock and John Cena and Brock Lesnar. But the thing is, in boxing, you don't need those big bulky muscles. If you want to be a bodybuilder, be a bodybuilder. Or if you want to look hench, go to WWE. But being a boxer and having these muscles, um, it, it don't really mean much. And that's what I've always said and that's what I'll always stand to. The night of the fight, it was a lot different. Obviously, Anthony Joshua was the challenger and he had the ring walk first. Now, one thing I noticed about that ring walk, Jesus Christ, that shit took forever. I see Anthony Joshua coming out and Anthony Joshua really stripped this one down. He didn't have all of his merry men. He didn't have none of those yes men. He didn't have that little faggot looking guy with the ponytail that follows him around and holds his ball bags when he takes a piss. He didn't have Anthony. He didn't have Eddie Hearn following him out. He didn't have Umar, IFL Umar, sort of coattailing him. He just walked on his own. And he walked and he walked into the ring and you could see he looked nervous. He didn't have nothing there, and I think that was a good thing. He didn't have the stupid AJ and fire. He was very humble. And that's what he said. He was humble in defeat and he came back. And he walked to the ring and he looked very nervous. Um, and then Andy and then Andy Ruiz walked in and I remember I was sitting next to my brother and my cousin and I was like, shit, Andy Ruiz should have hired a golf buggy because it's a long ass walk and he'd probably end up getting tired by the time he gets to the ring. So I was like, shit, if this guy's actually put on an additional 50, 15 pounds, he might be exhausted just by the time he gets to the ring. So these guys are facing off and um, AJ is looking straight into the soul of Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz is in his usual nice guy sort of element, not really showing too much. And then the first bell goes and Anthony Joshua, he's boxing well, he is boxing and he's controlling the fight. He's jabbing, he's jabbing, he's jabbing. He did let go of a right hand and then boom, top left of Ruiz's eyebrow. He cut open Ruiz in the first round, and I was like, uh-oh. But the fact is, it wasn't a dirty cut. And the thing about Anthony Joshua is that he never really targeted that cut either. I mean, if I had cut somebody open and I was a boxer, I'd just be punching the cut and trying to open it up and make him bleed and bleed until, you know, he's finding it difficult to see. Ruiz was sort of bleeding, but none of it was going into his eye. It was all rolling down the side of his face and onto his big fat belly. And Anthony Joshua was sort of jabbing. He wasn't really throwing the right hand. Um, for me, I think by about round three, I was just like, this is a snooze fest. Watching that fight, it was te it was very difficult for me. I was watching it with my brother. I was watching it with my cousin. My cousin is the biggest AJ casual dick riding fanboy I've ever met in my entire life, and my brother is a huge casual fan. He'll watch he'll watch the occasional AJ fight, and before Tyson Fury went to America, he watched the occasional Fury fight. Doesn't know fuck all about boxing, but he was rooting for. AJ as well. Then my brother's boy came, I think, second or third round, and I think he was a bit like me. Or maybe he was neutral. For me, I'll be honest, I wanted Ruiz to win because I didn't think that AJ would want to fight Wilder after, and we'll get to that later on in the video. But yeah, the fight, it was very negative. Going through the rounds, AJ's controlling the fight. Um, every so often, Ruiz would sort of up the gear, up the ante, and he's got AJ sort of back treadling. AJ's having to hop and skip left, right, left, right. And I'm screaming at the TV screaming for Andy Ruiz to keep that momentum, keep that pressure going, because you could see it was clear as day. Anthony Joshua did not like when Andy Ruiz was coming forwards. Anthony Joshua hates fighting on the back foot. The fact is, the two of them were fighting so friggin' negatively. I told my brother and my cousin that this was going to be a points win and probably for AJ. I know a lot of people think that I hate AJ, but the fact is, you know, he, he boxed well. He did what he needed to do. But the fight was so boring. Anthony Joshua's throwing one one jab, double jab, triple jab, not throwing the right hand. Ruiz kept leading with like a big looping left hook. And even when he did catch AJ occasionally from times, um, Ruiz wasn't following it up. He wasn't putting together the combinations. And Ruiz just looked like he, he just... He was out of his depth. I think Ruiz had one game plan in mind, and when it didn't work, I don't think he knew what to do. AJ was actually just controlling it. I mean, for the entire fight, I think I gave Ruiz maybe about three rounds, and I think the judges probably gave him the same as well. Um, 
And I remember towards the back end, I think it was round 12 or round 11, Ruiz was screaming at Joshua, telling Joshua to come forward and fight him. And Joshua was smiling because Joshua knew he had done everything he needed to. AJ just jabbed his way to victory. Now, to me, that was one of the most boring fights I've ever seen. It was Tyson Fury-esque. And what makes it worse is that <clears throat> Anthony, Anthony Joshua said he was going to knock out Ruiz and send a statement back. Now, to me... Yes, he won the fight and the tactics were good, but where was this knockout that he promised us? You've just come off the back of getting knocked out, getting hit, knocked down four times and spitting at your gum shield and quitting. <clears throat> and you fought that very negative fight. I mean, the only thing that really matters right now is that Anthony Joshua is a two-time heavyweight unified champion of the world and Andy Ruiz no longer is. Andy Ruiz will be kicking himself this morning um, as he's getting ready to fly back to America because, you know, had he had actually fought a half-decent fight, maybe Andy Ruiz would have remained the unified champion. Andy Ruiz wasn't putting his punches together. In fact, I think both of them were just so fucking cautious, it made the fight shit. <clears throat> AJ wasn't throwing the right hand and Andy Ruiz weren't putting the combinations together. I think the things that AJ did well was just fighting behind the jab, not allowing Ruiz to come forwards and nullifying him. AJ was hitting him with a very good sort of battering ram jab and Andy Ruiz really didn't have much to say about it. Andy Ruiz, what he needed to do was maybe eat a bit of liver to get inside, but he just wasn't prepared to do that. I was screaming at the TV and come round 11, I was like, my God, Andy Ruiz, you've got to knock him down. You've got to knock him out because he was so far behind on the scorecards and AJ knew that and come about round 11, AJ was just really just sort of cruising i'm not gonna lie at times it was a snooze fest i was expecting a knockout i was expecting blood i was expecting war and we got nothing we didn't get anything quite like it all we got was two guys <clears throat> who were very sort of scared to you know take a whim aj didn't want to get countered and ruiz uh, i don't know I don't know what this says, but Anthony Joshua is now the two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Um, after the fight, Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn both sort of avoided the fact that they don't both sort of made it clear that they have no intentions of fighting Deontay Wilder and they have no intentions of fighting Tyson Fury. I think it was actually quite strange because all of the Sky Sports pundits were basically picking Wilder to beat Joshua if it happens. I think the first person who had the balls to say it was Carl Frotch, and Carl Frotch has said, based off of AJ's last two performances, if he was going to fight Wilder, you'd have to fancy Wilder for it. Followed up by um, George Groves, who was like, AJ's done well to get these belts back, but he doesn't think that he'll be good enough. And then I think even Johnny Nelson finally admitted and came off the hype train. I believe Johnny Nelson said that, you know, he thinks that Wilder would probably have him have his number as well. It's a fight that we're not going to see. Um, and that's why I wanted Ruiz to win for so long. But after... Um, Ruiz's dad said that he had spoken to Al Heyman and put together a free fight plan if they won and none of those fights involved fighting Deontay Wilder at that point I didn't give a shit because I was just like this is stupid Anthony Joshua now finds himself in a bit of a dilemma he has two mandatories and needs to, sac and needs to satisfy both of them Kubrat Pulev with the IBF Alexander Usyk with the WBO if he is forced to drop a belt don't be surprised if it's the WBO belt Alexander Usyk is a matchroom fighter, so Usyk will probably end up fighting Chisora or somebody else for that vacant belt. AJ will go and fight Kubrat Pulev, probably back in Wembley. I think he's had enough of travelling now. And to be fair, after going to New York and then Diria or Riyadh or whatever fucking place in Dubai it was, um, fair play to him. Um, what do I think? I think AJ is going to be fighting a lot of matchroom fighters for now. Um, I can see he'll probably fight Pulev, which is a top-ranked fighter. He'll get through Pulev, and then he'll probably have a rematch with Dillian White, and then probably fight Usyk and Michael Hunter and anybody else that Eddie Hearn has signed up in that time. Uh, don't expect him to fight Deontay Wilder. And even if he wants to fight Wilder, I don't want to see it unless all four of the major belts are on the line. 
Um, you know, if AJ is stripped of one of the belts, I don't want to see him fighting Wilder for three titles because realistically, they've had ample opportunity to get in the ring and do their thing. I actually think, based off of his last couple of performances, I think Deontay Wilder knocks him out cold in six rounds or less, but, you know, time will tell. I've also been on record to say I don't think AJ will want to fight Wilder for another three or four years. He's going to wait until Deontay Wilder's about 37 or 38. But yeah, what did you guys think of that performance? I mean, you can call it a masterclass boxing performance, but you know, he didn't knock him out and he didn't throw the right hand often enough. Uh, what did you think of Ruiz? Do you feel like Ruiz just cashed out? Do you feel like Ruiz gave up or do you just think that AJ was that good or Ruiz just didn't have a good enough plan B? Um, I'd love to know your comments guys um, sorry this is going to be a longer video than usual um, and I'm sure you probably got bored listening to me but yeah that's my take on it um, you know AJ is now the two time heavyweight champion of the world let me know your thoughts on the fight um, hit like, hit subscribe press that bell icon, share the video that's the end of the show because Remstar says so